Morgan was possessed of other excesses. Domination was his entertaining lust, seeking entry into the AC industries with a classless, avaricious vengeance. On the social surface, all remained serene for Tesla, a pleasant pool. Tesla was now the darling of the uptown social classes, the envy of New York City investors. Speculators were intent on riding the Tesla magic carpet to riches. But the circulating streams of Tesla's life had become as complex as the polyphase currents circulating in his generators. Now Morgan, intent on buying the entire technology of polyphase, sent attaches directly to Tesla himself. Tesla repeatedly and politely rejected Morgan's now insistent gestures, reminding him that he, too, was a multimillionaire. Morgan warned Tesla that his resistance would prove fatal. Returning to Tesla after a time, Morgan informed Tesla that he had succeeded in monopolizing the industries which produced power lines and cable. Without him now, there would be no way for Tesla to export electrical power to his customers. Tesla calmly informed Morgan that a means had already been found to eliminate the need for power line technology. And Morgan laughed at what he believed was a simple whimpering bluff. Finally, Tesla was infuriated. His dream of flooding the world with light, comfort, and equality would not be stopped by pseudo-aristocratic thugs. The truth was that Tesla had already made an accidental observation, which completely separated him from polyphase and conventional electric science forever. The year was 1891. The abrupt interruption of a high-voltage DC arc was felt by Tesla as a stinging shock, though several feet from the working system. He examined this phenomenon with greatest interest. Electrostatically induced rays were found to be the cause. The light-like rays were strong and penetrating, possessed of mysterious characteristics. Joseph Henry first observed these rays in 1842. Elihu Thompson later accidentally generated them in 1872. These piercing rays differed from the weak electromagnetic waves which Maxwell had predicted. Heinrich Hertz had not generated them. Tesla conceived of a system by which electrical power could be broadcast directly through the air, one which required no power lines at all. Accepting an invitation by Sir William Crookes to address the Royal Society of London, Tesla demonstrated this phenomena in 1892. The new and astounding discovery of electrical rays sped throughout the financial world. Upon hearing of these announcements through technological advisors, Morgan was outraged. His large investments in the technology of power lines had been eradicated in a single stroke of Teslian genius. Having returned from his triumphant European lecture tour, Tesla undertook the construction of special new generators and large transformers. These produced the non-alternating impulses capable of radiating electric rays through space. Tesla's new announced broadcast power system would ruin Morgan's monopolistic plans. This rare examination of interior spaces near the South Fifth Avenue laboratory reveals the scale in which Tesla conducted this research a scale now considered gargantuan to all but military researchers. What began as a gentleman's duel would end in disaster for Tesla. Tesla now found himself in a network of Morgan's shadowy intrigues. Morgan's audacious forays were further complicated by the steely tenacity of his own daughter, Anne, who refused to depart from pursuing Tesla at every turn. And Morgan's brooding fascination with the dark millionaire grew into passions and obsessions, which later proved deadly. Tesla had been known to work through the early morning hours in upper laboratory floors. Was it only chance one night which led him out of the building to enjoy an early and prolonged dinner at Delmonico's? Shortly after midnight on March the 13th, 1895, Tesla was interrupted at 2.30 a.m. by his frantic technical assistant, Cole Mangito. The wonderful South Fifth Avenue laboratory was on fire. Explosion after explosion rocked the fashionable district as laboratory floors fell one upon another.
entire structure was reduced to a smoking amalgam in a short time, the obvious work of hired saboteurs. Tesla stood alone and for a time devastated. The fire, a foiled death attempt, had consumed everything of value which he had cherished. The entire armada comprising his ray technology had been wiped away in an instant. Most of his money had been placed in this new technology. Tesla wandered off shortly after sunrise amid the swirling ashes and could not be located by worried friends or associates for days. Fire burns dross. Untold transformations took place in his mind and heart. Tesla returned with a firm resolve to establish a new and subversive regime of power, one which would effectively burn away all memory of his own polyphase technology. With what funds he had yet retained, Tesla announced the opening of his third great laboratory at 46 East Houston Street, this the probable site. Morgan was shocked to hear that he was still alive. Tesla publicly requested funds from Morgan, quote, that great visionary financier, unquote. Morgan, fearing public accusations of involvement in the laboratory fire, publicly yielded a sizable sum to Tesla. Tesla's reprisals would be far more complete than Morgan could ever imagine. His worldwide plan would rock the financial world in ways it could not yet appreciate. Electric ray technology was completely new, an alien thing to those of his own time period. Tesla made numerous press releases concerning his newest perspectives on ray power and ray power transmission. Performed in these halls, each demonstration proved his world-revolutionizing concepts in power technology. Impulse ray beams, wirelessly ran motors, heated rooms, and flooded lamps with brilliant light, a feat which Sir Oliver Lodge was never able to achieve with high-frequency harmonic alternations. Impulses were the key, a fact which his academic rivals had failed to recognize. Tesla played the American dynastic beasts, their government servants, the academicians, and the press with the finesse of a master. When he permitted a social interlude from his labors, he was drawn only to very select members of the more cultured New York social scene, no longer fascinated by the superficial opulence of the Fashion 400. Tesla remained among those families with whom he could share something of his mind and hopes, his dreams and desires.